Yay. <laughs> All right, it finally went live. It was like the hourglass was like ding, 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 ding. And I was like here, like where, when are we going live? All right. Thank you for joining. I'm Alexandra Harbushka. I'm founder of Life with Herpes. I'm super stoked to be here with you. I have had, well, I've had herpes for almost two decades. I've had it for 19 years. I don't like saying that. That means that I'm telling you my age without telling you my age. But um, anyways, I have had HSV-1 since 2003 and uh, I've had HSV-2 since 2011. So with that being said, I have lived my life with herpes, uh, my adult life with herpes. I am here to help break the stigma. I'm here to answer the questions. I'm here to support you. I'm here to uh, get, I like to call the phase of when you're diagnosed, you're in a pissed off situation, you feel like you have uh, you know, no direction to go, no ups, no downs, you are just stuck. I like to call that the Eeyore phase. And the Eeyore phase is when you are absolutely stuck when you feel like there's a rain cloud over you, when you feel like there's no hope, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, your day just consumes and you're in a whirlwind of herpes, 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 herpes. How am I gonna get out of this? How am I gonna deal with it? How am I gonna live my life with herpes? And what a question I want to ask yourself is, what is it that herpes does? Like what? Why is it that we give herpes so much power? So I was guilty of that when I was first diagnosed with herpes. I gave herpes all my power. I believed that I couldn't get a job promotion. I believed that I couldn't get out of debt. I believed that I had to stay with the guy that I got herpes from. Gosh, I need to blow my nose. I was lighting some sage, clear the energy, and I'm like, made my nose stuffy. Um, but anyways, I believe that I was just stuck in this Eeyore phase. I was extremely angry at men. I was angry at love. I was angry at everybody. Like I just, like my skin was gray. I had awful acne, like the acne that like you have a pulse. I was struggled with my weight. Hey, Aaron. Um, I was struggling with my weight. I was struggling with eating. I was binge eating. I was just in an unhealthy spot. So I definitely thank god i got herpes because it kicked me into this it forced me into this new phase of my life of getting through it so back to my initial question is why is it we are allowing this microscopic virus this herpes virus to control our life to keep us in this eeyore phase well number one i think it's i think it's the stigma i think that we get so consumed in the thought of oh my gosh, you have herpes, now you're disgusting, or now you're used goods, or you're the scarlet letter, or you're never going to be loved, adored, touched, sensual, all these things that we want. Maybe if you're a female, you're like, I'm never gonna be a mom. Um, all these things, and they're, they're, there's like zero truth. It's 100% false. The only thing that's true about it is if you believe it. So if you believe it, you become sucked into your own beliefs or your own your own um, your own whirlwind and that's what I don't want for you and that's why I'm here that's why I created life with herpes that's why I have the YouTube channel I have all the social media channels and this is why I've been here so um, yeah let me so ask your questions I answer them I do my best to answer them so I can go through them and get them so I'm still feeling weird since finding out and people around me are so mature they talk about it so bad all right I totally get it. Um, one of the things that I like to say is when we talk about rejection and, and one of the things is there's three reasons why I believe rejection happens, but specific, specifically to you, um, Tisha, yeah, Tisha, um, is there's a lot of people that are just emotionally immature and a lot of times they're just not there yet, right? Like if you, you haven't lived life, you can't you can't hold it against them. They've only lived as many years as they've lived. Um, but a lot of it too comes down to um, beliefs. Are they married to a specific belief that has kept them um, feeling this way? What society uh, narrative has been playing in their mind? And this is one of the good things about having herpes is it forces us to have these uncomfortable conversations about sexual health with our partner. 
And so that way we can know, okay, is this person emotionally immature about sex? Because if they are, then that just gives me feedback. That could be a red flag or it might be, hey, I'm totally comfortable with where this person is. Thanks for the hearts, guys. So um, yeah, definitely people talk about it. As far as people behind your back, we can't worry or we can't be responsible responsible for other people's uh, emotions. We can't be responsible responsible for other people's reactions. We can't be responsible responsible for people um, naysaying or whispering. We were talking about this on our support group call yesterday. We have a weekly support group with uh, our community. It's just private to our community. And someone was on the call and she's like, I live in this really small community and I'm really scared that if my relationship doesn't work out, I'm going to go out, I'm going to start dating, I'm going to disclose, and then it's going to spread like a wildfire to people, to my ex, all this. And I said, that very, that very well might be the case. Like we, we don't know, we, we can't predict what's gonna happen. Um, but there's two ways to diffuse it. One, detach yourself from the outcome of it. Detach yourself from that unwanted stigma. Detach yourself from like, ew, did you know that Alexandra has herpes? Oh my God. Like detach yourself from that. People are gonna talk about you regardless of you having herpes or not having herpes, period. They're gonna talk about you. Number two, the other great way to, di to diffuse this is you talk about it. You tell them. The people that you're most worried about, them, you tell them, right? I, I, ta I was, this is exactly what I said on, on the call, was I was watching the, the Crown, which is Queen Elizabeth and her reign, and I, what I found very interesting from that, anytime there was something negative that was happening within the monarch, the queen owned, owned it. She stood up and she owned it and she told the press, opposed to hiding behind it and letting it manifest and then rumors happening. Now, I don't know if you wanna go public about your herpes diagnosis and I totally understand that, but if there's you know people at work that are pss, 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 then confront them. Just, hey, I, you know what, I know this is what's happening and I just wanna bring it to your attention. Hey, yeah, I have herpes, you're right. And if you have any questions about it, I'd love to answer that for you. Just so you know, it's something that's extremely common. So you may be joking about it, you know, and, and where it doesn't necessarily hurt my feelings, but 80% of the population actually has herpes. And so the people that you may be joking with most likely someone in there has it and it really might be hurting them. Just wanted to bring it to your awareness. So there's definite ways to diffuse it. There's definite ways to enlighten people and um, stop it. So yeah, are there people that know that I have herpes that think it's like awesome and they're like, I knew it, I knew it. Of course, of course, duh. But. If I'm gonna let them control my thoughts, then I'm becoming a slave to them, right? And their thoughts, and that's not right. So that was a really, really long answer to you about, yeah, people can be nasty. People can be nasty about the herpes stigma, but the sooner that you, the sooner that I, that me, the sooner that all of us can detach from that is when we become free, right? It's like an exodus from this, preconceived thought. It's the parting of the seas here. Moving on. Okay, I'll get off my rant. That was a long rant. You're trying to get out of it, but when I talked to my um, OB, she made me feel at ease. That's great. That's really, yeah. I'm really glad to hear that you're obstet yeah, obstetrician. I think, I don't know, OB. I'm really glad that um, she made you feel good. I think for the most part, I'm scared because I don't want to feel judged again. So again, judgment is something we're gonna to have to deal with for the rest of our lives. And it's part of who we are. I realize now that I have herpes, I was a big judger prior to having herpes. Now when I judge people, I have to give myself, okay, we don't know that person's story, we don't know the behind the scenes, we don't know where they're going, and they may be very happy with their situation, right? Um, so we don't know until we actually have a conversation with them and understand you're welcome you're welcome but people are going to judge you regardless and as soon as we can get away from worrying is the day that we become free i've had herpes for six years and it's never been an issue for me it's not a gross it's not gross it's a skin ailment thank you um yeah i 
thank you for someone that's had it for a few years talking about how it's just a skin condition skin ailment it's, a, it's annoying at times i'm not gonna lie i've had an outbreak for the last week am i over it i'm over it i'm i'm over it i'm not over it but i'm over it like i'm done I want to wear my sexy jammies. I want to be, I want to have some fun time with my husband. Like, I'm over it, but I'm not over it. Bro, like 80% of the population have herpes and so many people are asymptomatic. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the absolute truth. So the majority of the pop has it. Majority of the pop are asymptomatic. Majority of the pop are, when I say pop, I mean population, are never going to be diagnosed with it. They're either going to think they're either asymptomatic, they either just had an outbreak and never got another one or you know it was like they're so few and far between or three they misdiagnose it for something else oh it's an awful zit oh it's razor burn oh it's a bug bite whatever what is asymptomatic asymptomatic means there's no symptoms so typically a herpes outbreak um, it can be a paper cut type of sore it can be a cluster or it can be one blister so most of the population actually don't get outbreaks and are asymptomatic, meaning they don't know they have it, yet they can still transmit it. How not to give it to your partner. So that's something that we can't be 100% on. You know, and I hate to say this, like if you don't wanna give it to your partner, don't have sex, right? But that's not real. I taught sex ed uh, through Planned Parenthood back in the 90s. And one of the things that like, I would get asked is like, how do you not get a girl pregnant? And I'd be like, well then don't have sex. Like that was like the sure way, right? Now I would reiterate that and I would follow up with, I know that's not a fair statement, but if you're that concerned about it, then don't do it. And I was talking to like 14 year olds, mind you, okay? But there are ways, there are methods. Number one, the best way to prevent transmission is communicate. Communicate to your partner. Hey, I have herpes. I've had it. Da, 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 da. This is the type I have. This is where I have it. This is how it kind of manifests in my body. Here's what I am going to do. And you and I need to be on the same page of what we both feel comfortable with dealing with herpes. So that's number one. Number two would be um, using an antiviral. The antiviral is FDA proven to help lower the transmission rate by 48%. So it definitely helps keep the virus dormant, which would help with asymptomatic shedding, you are contagious with asymptomatic shedding, and actual outbreaks. And then number three would be to use a condom. If you're using a condom that is gonna cut back the skin-to-skin -skin exposure, you are protecting some skin, some areas, and it lessens the transmission, it protects you 30 to 50% of the time. So while these things are not like 100%, nothing's 100%, back to what I was saying earlier, the 100% method is don't have sex. Now, again, I don't think that's a great, I don't think that's a great answer. I want you to enjoy life. I want you to have sex. I want you to have a relationship with people. Have I noticed a decrease in my outbreaks over time? I go through waves. I go through seasons with it. Um, currently, I'm in a season of having outbreaks. Um, it really is contingent for me on my vitamins, it's on, on my supplements, am I taking care of my body? But yeah, there are definite times where it's increased and not. Always disclose and educate. Also, I believe 5% of transmission rate for woman to man per year. Uh, uh, yeah, so you believe that, well, I want to clear that statistic. Um, yes, always disclose, and you can use that as an education, as an opportunity to educate your partner about it. Let him or her know that, hey, I under like if they're like, ah, I don't want to take the risk. Great, I totally understand, and trust me, I've been there. Just so you know, that majority of the population has it. It's going to be a lot harder to find someone without it than it is going to be with it. With that being said, most people don't even know they had it, and that's kind of when it gets transmitted. So I've read different statistics um, from the John, Hop John Hopkins University, from WebMD. I've read anywhere from you are contagious 10% of the time to you're cont contagious like two to 5% of the time. So those are two different articles. I'd be happy to do a post on them where you can link it and see it. With that being said, I just want us all to know whether it is 10%, 5%, 20%, we have to let it go. 
we have to say, all right, I know that there's a risk of transmission. I'm gonna do my best to prevent it. The person I'm with, he or she is making a conscious decision to accept it. They're making a competent, comp conscious decision. They're a big girl, big boy, they can make it on their own. I'm not gonna make their decision for it. Do your eyes water a lot? I don't think so. How did I get it? I had sex. <laughs> um, no, but I had a, someone I was dating and he didn't know he had it and I got it. Simple. That was HSV2. HSV1, a guy kissed me with a cold sore. I was on a date, he kissed me goodnight, he had a cold sore. That's how I got that one. Uh, unfortunately, there's still a huge stigma in judging. Absolutely, 100%, and I'm not gonna deny that. Um, there is a huge stigma. We just have to learn to detach from it and say like, I'm not gonna become a vict victim to a stigma that majority of the population has. Do I take antivirals every day? I do not. Actually, what I take, let me show you. This is my little stash, guys. These are all of my personal stash of the Secret Society wellness products. These are mine. These are not for sale, so do not worry that um, sometimes my little boy gets into them. <laughs> like this one. My little boy stuck his finger in there. This is the Rescue Balm. That is great to apply it topically to an outbreak. Um, yeah. Anyways, what I take daily is monolaurin um, and lysine. So these are some supplements that work really, really well to help with the replication or to help the suffocation of the virus, help with the replication as well as help with the viral viruses in our body and help our immune system. So no, I don't take the antiviral daily. I have in the past, like I explained, there's been seasons that I've needed to, there's been times in my life where I needed to. We're not a hero if we don't take it, nor are we a failure if we have to take it. There's a lot of natural ways, like I was just showing you here with my wellness products here. These are products that um, I created with specialists, took us over a year to actually formulate them, but they are specific to herpes outbreaks and they're all natural and very powerful. So I use them daily, I use all that daily. I'm not recommending anyone do this, but I always use isoprofil alcohol in my outbreaks, works for me. I have no idea what that is, but if that works for you, do it. Yeah, absolutely. For HSV-1, what I recommend uh, for outbreak prevention, for topical, for oral, products what do you what do you mean for topical if it's hsv1 like oral i recommend using this um spf lip balm daily whoa my son got into this one that's why i know i can use it um i'll put it on but oh <laughs> that's funny you gotta love you gotta love having tot uh toddlers anyways there's lysine in this there's 100 milligrams of lysine in it. Lysine will help suffocate the virus. It'll help with the replication of it. There's also natural ingredients that hydrate your lips, protect your lips from the sun, and also will fight uh, inflammation and, and pain and things like that. So I'd recommend this if you have oral herpes, even if you don't have oral herpes, using this daily. I just, I use it, I mean, I have oral herpes, but I use this daily, it just feels good. So, uh, so you use rubbing alcohol. I've heard of someone else using rubbing alcohol. I don't know, that seems like it would really sting, but if that works for you, I would do it. I would absolutely do it. You're awesome, thank you for all you do. You're welcome, you're awesome. Thanks for joining me, thanks for being here. Yes, tree oils, yes, um, tea tree oil is, uh, is fabulous. It's wound healing, it is wound cleaning, it helps with repair of the skin. I put that in our everyday wellness oil. So this has tea tree oil and citrus oil. Citrus oil is very helpful also with the herpes virus. And there's some other great things in here like chamomile oil and lysine and other great things. So lots of pretty things. It stings for a second, but it's not an unbearable sting. It's different for everyone. Yeah, I, alcohol in an outbreak sounds like, but people can put essential oils directly on outbreaks. It can sting as well. So if it's drying it up and cleaning it and that works for you, I think that's awesome. 
With that being said, what remedies do you guys use? Like, how do you, what do you use to prevent your outbreaks or speed up the recovery? I would love to know. That way I could potentially support you or create something for you. Your YouTube videos have helped me so much. You don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, thank you. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, and yeah, YouTube is where it all started. And um, we have a couple hundred videos on there. So there's a lot. How do you talk to someone about it? I would say it depends on what type of person you're talking, not what type of person. How tall are they? No. I would, I would ask yourself, what are you looking for out of the relationship? Is it a past partner? Are you disclosing to someone in the past? Like, hey, I have this. I probably, I slept with you. I probably exposed you to it. Is it that type of conversation? Is it a conversation of like very casual hookup E? Or is it a conversation more of like, I want a long-term relationship with you? I would say if it's someone in the past, the sooner the better. Hey, I just got diagnosed. It's something I'm dealing with. I need to know that I may have, you need to know I may have exposed you to this. I unintentionally did it and it's my way of you know like paying it forward and I want you to know take the information as you want um, and do what you want with it that would be that if it's something very casual then it's casual do it via text do it as soon as possible because if it's casual you want to know and be on to the next person right um, so just be super casual hey I have herpes this is what we're gonna do to prevent transmission we're gonna do this 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 and this you you good you cool I'm cool cool if it's something on a longer term, regardless, I recommend everybody getting tested. I just feel like if people get tested, then it solves a lot of gray areas or worry or concern or pointing fingers at you. Or like, you did this to me. Well, if we had the test results prior to sleeping together, then we actually know who did what and where we all stood. Um, it's so easy for people to, once something like this happens, people can so rapidly point the finger and turn angry. And you're like, how my, the per, I didn't fall in love with this person. This person would have never done that. People can do that when we get spiteful. Are you contagious before your primary outbreak? Yes and no. Yes, I'm gonna go with yes. A lot of times people can have out their primary outbreak years later, which means that you're asymptomatic for years, which means that you would be contagious. Most, the most um, incubation periods are within two weeks. So yeah, you're probably contagious before your body's fighting it. So I did a hookup and just found out I have it and we use protection. So that's a great, well, that's great. No, um, not great that you got herpes. The thing about herpes is it's skin to skin. And a lot of times we think like it's just on the genitals, so it's just on the the, vag the vaginal area or just on the penis area or it's just in that area. Um, it can be anywhere, so I'm gonna stand up. It can be anywhere in this region. The boxer can be below your belly button, it can be in your inner thighs, it can be your hamstrings, it can be on your butt. I personally get mine on my tailbone. It can be in any of those areas and last time I checked, a condom doesn't cover that. So uh, again, condoms are great. I'm not against condoms by any means, but the whole like me like motto of like just throw one on and you'll be fine is not true because it doesn't cover the entire area. Would you say what well, would you say your advice for stigma would apply to other STIs? Absolutely. I would absolutely say that. I would say that if you're sexually active, you're going to get an STI. I'd also say that unless you are both virgins and meet, have a monogamous relationship for the longevity of your life or for your lifetime. But um, yeah, I was at the my gynecologist for my annual and um, one of the things I had to fill out all the new paperwork because like they updated it and it was like, mark off these things that apply. Like, have you ever had a an abnormal pap? And that means that you have an abnormal pap smear means you have like abnormal cells on your pap. That's an STI, it's STI. So I was like, check, like, have you had genital herpes? Check. I was like, wow, I'm checking off more STIs than I thought I wanted to. So um, we definitely will come in contact with them. Um, and if we're gonna have sex, we're probably gonna get them. You've actually heard people will get at least one, uh, get one STI once, yeah. I don't know the exact statistic. I think it is 50% of the population will get, I, 
I don't really know. I'm not even going to say it. I don't know what the, the statistic is on that. You recently disclosed to someone that way. I just presented it a super casual way as well. And did it go well? Was it a like successful disclosure? I hope so. You got it through HSV1. You got it through a cold sore. Did someone have fun with their mouth with you and give it? I'm like trying to say it like, did they have fun with their mouth? Did they use their mouth? I'm trying to say it so I don't get in trouble, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, HSV1 gets transmitted all the time to the other area down there um, because people don't realize that cold sores, are, it's the same thing. And by having oral sex, you can transmit it. And people don't realize that. I've actually heard people will get it, uh, yes, they use their mouth. Yeah, that's to probably how it got, it got transmitted, unfortunately. All right, my friends, I thought I heard my baby. Um, yeah, I've got a bounce. I have a little baby. Well, he's two now. He's still my baby. Um, I honestly wish I had more people to talk to in this situation as well. So that's why I'm here, is so that we can talk about it, I can answer your questions. If you're really looking for people to talk to, I'd recommend joining our community, our group. It is a membership, it is a subscription. It's $15 a month. You get access to our online platform, you get access to the community. We have two live calls a week, where it's myself and other people from around the world. It, they're really, really, really awesome, great calls. We're gonna have an awesome, great speaker next Great speaker, guest speaker next week that will be fabulous. So um, anyways, would love to see you in that. It is linked. If you go to new start here, join the community, it will be there for you. I just want you all to know I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here with me. That means a lot to me. So thank you for that. I will be here for you. Uh, we're in this together. Just, hey, let's not let this virus control our life. Let's not let it... Um, dictate what we can and cannot do and our happiness. I get we get down on it. I get we can sometimes be like, but it's just not worth, life is too short and too beautiful and it's not worth letting a microscopic virus that everybody has ruin our life or rule our life. Um, they were super appreciative of me being honest and said they weren't bothered at all. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Love you all. I will see you soon. Hopefully tomorrow. 